So to keep the momentum going on these videos about informatics nurses, this time I'm actually going to be interviewing a panel of them in which they share some of their experiences. All right, hope you guys enjoy. Uh, we're we're going to start off with some questions and we'll start with some basics um, of introductions. So let's start with Jared and okay. just go through and state your name, your title, and kind of your education and background. Okay. Uh, Jared Ross. I am a senior informatics nurse specialist. Uh, background wise, uh, so I worked my way up through um, healthcare. I actually started as a health unit coordinator, um, then a CNA, um, and then went into nursing. Uh, I've been a nurse for uh, eight, a little over eight years, um, and I've been in nursing informatics for the past four years. Okay. So. And what was your, um, when did you do your education training? Um, spread across a couple of different uh, organizations. Technical College and Winona State University did my bachelor's and then I did Walden University for my master's. So, okay. Yeah. My name is Erin Henderson. I'm also an um, informatics nurse specialist. I've been a nurse for 20 years now and uh, 15 of those years inpatient, f the last five years um, in informatics. My education background is I got my bachelor's in nursing from Winona State University and then I did my master's in health administration and informatics through the University of Phoenix. My name is Ben Nelson. I've been an informatics nurse specialist for uh, about two years now. I've been a nurse for a total of 17 years. First 13 or 14 years in general care, intensive care. I got my bachelor's of science from South Dakota State University and my master's in nursing informatics from Walden University. Okay, lots of years of experience here, <laughs> <laughs> which is excellent. So I think a common question is like, how do you even get into informatics? A lot of people don't even know about informatics out there. So if you can go through, maybe starting with Ben this time, how did you find out about informatics and what sparked that interest? Sure, so my path was a little strange in that I didn't really know about nursing informatics at all. Probably 12, 13 years into nursing, I decided that I wanted to go back to school for something, but I didn't know what it was, what I wanted to go to school for. I was actually talking to a, a colleague of mine at my organization um, who's worked outside of nursing, um, looking at optimizing um, efficiency and stuff within the organization and I thought that sounded interesting and I thought that there might be kind of a niche for somebody who is a nurse to help out with some of those things and then uh, another colleague of mine was going back to school to Walden for nurse practitioner and I just happened to look at what other programs they had and they had nursing informatics and I thought what's this so I checked it out after doing a little bit more research on the topic discovered we had a whole department at our organization so I got a hold of the CNIO at the time and met with him uh, just for like an hour interview to get some more details about what it was all about and that was it I had kind of a similar path I was well, as an inpatient nurse, whenever we had a new upgrade to our system or I worked labor and delivery so we were getting a new electronic fetal monitoring system or whenever new documentation for within the OR would come out, I ended up being a super user all the time and was a point person for implementing our new um, electronic fetal heart rate monitoring. So I really found my niche there and liked to do that. And so as I was thinking about going back for my master's and getting off of night shifts, the um, informatics came up and I also contacted the nurse administrator for informatics um, within my organization and spoke with him and really thought it sounded like something I would like to do. And actually one of the nurse managers that I worked with um, has a really good friend in informatics and she was telling me, she's like, I think you would love it. That's a good good path to try out. And so I went from there. Almost the same, same <laughs> setup. I had finished up my bachelor's and um, I guess the theme in my department was if there was a problem technically, they would go ask Jared first before I call help desk. <laughs> so I would do like quick kind of computer things and help out. One of my colleagues, uh, who was wrapping up his master's, said, hey, have you ever heard about informatics? You're probably really good at it. And I was like, no, I haven't. So did a little bit more investigating. 
And same, same route, once I found out we had a department, reached out to the CNIO and, and said, hey, can I spend some time finding out more about what this all entails? Because there really wasn't a lot out there. And after hearing that, I was like, this is, this is right up my alley. So I uh, continued to investigate further and, and worked into the education piece. So. Perfect. Um, okay, so one of the big questions that we typically get to, now that you're in informatics, people always wonder, what do you do? <laughs> <laughs> like, what, what does that day entail and things like that? So if, if you all can think of like, um, you know, something brief of what a typical day might entail, you can pick any day. Um, can you describe that a little bit? Like, let's start with Eric. Every day is different a lot of times, um, but that's what's really nice about informatics too, I think, is that you get a nice mixture. You're not, um, not always doing the exact same thing. Um, a typical day for me might be getting a phone call from an end user on a unit or a, or a manager or a clinical nurse specialist that you're working with. This isn't working quite right um, within the electronic health record. How can we troubleshoot this? Can you come and take a look at this and help us? Or, you know, we're gonna start doing this new process on our unit. So can you help us get a workflow around that? And how would how are we gonna do that? How are we gonna document that? Do we need to request anything to be built for that? Um, are the kind of questions that you might get. And then um, just attending practice meetings for with those units that you're covering um, are a couple of typical things that I'm doing. My typical day, I've been, ever since I've been in informatics, I've been in the middle of a project of a go live that's uh, almost four years long now. So my typical day has always been related to the project. So maybe not quite the same as Aaron's more typical informatics role that a normal informatics nurse would do but every day certainly different but some of the same themes uh, meeting with end users a lot to get the requirements needed um, for building uh, out the applications um, and uh, doing a lot of testing building um, that kind of thing mine's along the same lines but now that and you'll see this in the trend as we discuss this more, but um, I'm more in a leadership position, so I actually am over a team, so the inpatient documentation team. So it consists of many informatics nurses, but also IT individuals. So taking the same things that Aaron and um, Ben have mentioned, and often those have to go up to leadership for approval or review. Um, also, because of the organization that we work in, it's very large and mm -hmm. it requires a lot of stakeholders to weigh in on things. So as a, in a lead role, uh, you're taking those same skills, but now broadening it out to a leadership. Uh, so being able to still know how it works down to the user providing a question and how it works all the way up to leadership to approving that decision and then delegating that decision back down to um, analysts or or whoever it may be that makes the change in the EHR. So really a nice broad spectrum of many options that, that you can do with the nursing informatics. So. Okay, so I'm, I'm kind of curious, you know, from that perspective, um, it being in a leadership position, do you find yourself tackling a lot of build at all? Or is it more delegated back down? Um, I occasionally will. Uh, it's good to be able to know how the build works. Okay. Because uh, that that allows you to gauge like the amount of work that requires, or even what functionally can or cannot be done, instead of saying, "Oh wait, let me get back to you." I'll see. And often I have to. Is let me get back to you and see if it can be done. But if you're familiar with the build already and familiar with the workflow of that particular user, it makes a big difference when you can speak to it right there and help leadership understand that because they may or may not be familiar with that type of user or that type of workflow, or even what can be done in the EHR. Yeah. So. So adding on to that, what is the most favorite part of that day? <laughs> What's the least favorite part of that day? And this is kind of free for all. You can so like pros and cons then? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think for me, um, one thing I do miss, and I would count this as a con, is not being able to have that patient one-on-one -on -one interaction mm -hmm. anymore. Because I, I think you guys would agree that's the greatest thing about being a nurse, mm -hmm. is being able to help the individual. And the way that I look at it now as a pro is I'm not, I'm not able to help that individual, that patient, 
but I'm able to help the nurse and the provider and the other care providers that are caring for that patient. So they're my new patients. Mm -hmm. If I can make their job that much easier, it makes it that much easier for them to take care of the patient. So that's, that's my new kind of focus, or if I can help them, then that makes my day, because helping somebody out is way better than trying to figure out something for yourself to make it feel better, so. And building on that, I like rounding on the units and getting those aha moments, you know, rounding and just saying, how's it going? Do you need help with anything? And someone would be, oh, you know what? I did have a question last week on this. Can you show me how to do it? And as they're navigating in the system, even if you can say, you know, have you tried doing it this way? And they're like, that's so much easier. Like just being able to go and help them get those efficiencies within their workflow is really rewarding. I like that part of the job. Yeah, I would echo what they said. I think when you can help an end user and the light bulb clicks for mm -hmm. them, um, that that's probably the most rewarding. Uh, and knowing again, like they mentioned, that it, that's trickling on down to the patient care mm -hmm. level. I like to, to make things more efficient for the end users when you can do the build that meets their needs in an efficient manner. I used to tell people when I was a bedside nurse, don't mistake my efficiency for laziness. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and at the time I didn't even know what informatics was, but I think that's kind of where my mind was at, is I want to make things easier and more efficient mm -hmm. for the nurses. That's probably the biggest pro for me. Uh, con, I would say, running up against uh, technical limitations of the system mm -hmm. um, that you have to then explain to the end users why you can't do yeah. what they want to do. And then also just the kind of the, the politics and the red tape yeah. of a large mm -hmm. organization yeah. and getting changes made. That's yeah. what I was going to say too of something that you feel like would be an easy win for users but you have to go through all the layers of Mm -hmm. um, requesting it and getting those approvals before you can actually implement that. You really do become an advocate for the user because mm -hmm. uh, leadership often, not always, but often are looking at what's the financial impact, what's the mm -hmm. time it's going to take to do this, where we're trying to focus on how many more people can I make it easier for them, right. where they're not having to think about the tool they're using, they're thinking about the patient. Mm -hmm. So really understanding that workflow and going to bat for them. Okay. Certainly, but we'll probably talk about this a little later, but communication then is a oh. <laughs> yes. skill set yeah. yes. that you'd have to have um, in your all of that. Okay, so now let's, let's talk about a pathways to nursing informatics. We know a little bit about informatics, we know a little bit about um, what a typical day is. Now, if I was a college student or mm -hmm. I was a practicing nurse that had been practicing for many years, you know, what, what would you, you know, tell them in terms of a, a recommended pathway to get towards a nursing informatics. I think we've been blessed because we are in an organization that already had informatics established. Mm -hmm. But I remember in school um, with colleagues asking them questions. They were like, "I, I never seen a department of nursing informatics. Like they didn't even. Mm -hmm. They would no, There was nobody in their organization that even had it." So they would have to reach out to other organizations to even find that information. So finding out what you have available within your region. Uh, would be one and then like we all said we reached out to leadership and said mm -hmm. explain which which that in itself gets you in the door because they're like hey this is somebody that's interested they're right. reaching out to me so then if you keep that communication mm -hmm. and that relationship going um, they'll reach out to you or when you're ready to apply for a job they're like I already know this person mm -hmm. they've come and talked to me already and um, in my case I was actually already working on a uh, project where we were uh, we were looking at iPads for a tool for as nursing, so I had interacted with um, leadership already, but I didn't realize that's what nursing informatics was at the time. Mm -hmm. I was just helping out with the tool. Um, so finding projects that would allow you to get that experience, mm -hmm. so that you can say yes, I've I've participated in in a project, even at a nursing level. If you're still working on the floor, there's many opportunities where. If you see a, a workflow that could be improved upon, you can talk to your manager and say, how can I be part of this? And usually they're more than willing to <laughs> let you be involved. They love volunteers. So, yeah. I would say that's another ex uh, example I was going to bring up too, is to get involved in any projects you can on your, your unit level. But even before that, I think I would strongly suggest practicing as a nurse for a while yeah. uh, before you go back for nurse informatics. I know some of the other 
masters of nursing tracks, you can you can make the jump. But I would say in informatics, especially, it's very beneficial to know the workflows in your organization, mm -hmm. um, so that when you get into it, you can help out the end users better and just better understand how how things work in your organization. So I would I would advocate you know at least a few years of practice i don't know if like me if if it needs to be 13 or 14 <laughs> um, but well established yeah. <laughs> i agree because i think even with our um, it partners a lot of times they might think they have a good solution for um, what's needed but you look at them and you say, you know what, nursing doesn't even go to that area of the EMR or that's just not going to be in their workflow. And when you know that workflow and you've lived that workflow, it's really a valuable resource for you. Mm -hmm. So I asked Lex this question too because I'm very curious. Um, it's always good to get different perspectives. So practice experience sounds like you would agree is good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, folks out there are usually looking for a concrete number. I know we, we're not sure, but what would you say is maybe a range? What's a good range of how long should someone practice for? I would say at least three, three years or so, just because that whole first year that you're a nurse, you are learning so much. And then just gaining your knowledge and skill, you're gaining confidence in that first year and then building on your um, knowledge and skills. And then you start to maybe kind of be a preceptor for other nurses or start to get more into unit, maybe um, a unit council or different projects that are on the unit. Within that first year, you don't really do that because you're, le you know, you're learning to be a nurse and using your critical thinking more and just really focusing on that. But after that first year or so, you can start building on those experiences that you've had and, and take in some other unit projects like we were talking about. I'd agree. Out, out of the three of us, I'm the one that has probably the least amount of <laughs> floor time, but I did try to diversify that too. I was in general surgery and actually went into cardiovascular transplant with I thought that I was going somewhere else with my career, mm -hmm. but being able to see different levels of care and even see it in different types of hospitals, from a big hospital versus a small one, because what a nurse does, there can be a big difference. So mm -hmm. being well-rounded and having that, that foundation of just nursing in general, kind of like what Ben was saying, he, he became very efficient in his workflow and just knew what he needed to do day in and day out. And usually, at least for me, it was like, okay, I've got this down, what can I do next? And that's, if you feel comfortable enough with being a nurse at that point, I think that's prime for, for moving on and progressing in informatics. Yeah, I was going to say, if you wanted a hard number, probably three to five years. Mm -hmm. But the same thing that Jared said is if you can kind of spread that out in your knowledge. I mean, we all have different backgrounds and, and what we did for as uh, nurses at the bedside. And that has kind of parlayed into what we do now in, mm -hmm. in our informatics roles, kind of the areas we cover. So um, the more of that you can know um, from inpatient nursing to ambulatory to, you know, OR, whatever it may be, um, mm -hmm. I think it'll serve you uh, well to be, mm -hmm. to have a lot of different uh, yeah. skills there. Okay, so not only three to five years recommended, but even exploring different areas, different specialties. Yeah, you wouldn't want to limit yourself to just one area. There's, there's a lot out there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, um, let's say that individual we just talked to is now interested in informatics. They made those connections, they reached out to folks, and they're practicing. What are some skills you would say, you know, different than your typical nurse practice skills, that you may suggest you know, maybe brushing up on or learning. So, you know, examples are like PowerPoint. Project uh, management. Yeah, project yeah. mm -hmm. management. So what are some of those things that are different than nursing practice, would you say is really beneficial? Well, I don't know about you guys, but before I went into nursing informatics, I didn't use my work email, except for like, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> maybe right. once in a while. Right. But you'll find, as we've alluded to in communication, that is key. So mm -hmm. being able to express yourself and, and communicate what you're needing or you're not mm -hmm. understanding by email or letter is that's worth your weight in gold. You better know be able to type. I mean, that, if you can't do that, you might as well take classes to do that. But yeah, communication via electronic sources is very, very important. I, and PowerPoint, things like that, I think would be also helpful, but I think email communication is 100% something you need to be And being able to. to 
do virtual meetings, you know, yes. being able to stay focused when you're not in the room with a group of people because mm -hmm. as technology is growing and in an organization yeah. like we're in it that's so large, there's so much that goes on virtually that you really need to be able to embrace that. Yeah, yeah I was uh, thinking of when Terry <laughs> said too about, about my email. I didn't even know I had an Outlook calendar when I started yeah, in informatics. I and so I was, people were saying I was being invited to media. So and I was like, okay, how's that happening? <laughs> Um, so general Microsoft kind of skills, um, I would say Excel's very handy mm -hmm. and Visio. And Visio, yeah, for yeah. workflows is very. I would say the leading meetings and some project management stuff. I think it's good to understand the project management mm -hmm. principles. Not that you really have to put them into action a whole lot, but mm -hmm. I think it helps to understand it. To, um, and then, yeah, basic leadership um, I, meeting kind of facilitation classes. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't realize until I started doing it how hard it is to make uh, a meeting effortless. Mm -hmm. An agenda, like actually yeah. having <laughs> something formalized and, and provided before they even come to the meeting. You right. really can't do these off the cuff. <laughs> and to, yeah, <laughs> so. to corral a group of people to stay yeah. on, on an agenda and on yeah. task. And that's where some of the project management comes in too, is staying on task, is making mm -hmm. those goals for what your project is and meeting deadlines and um, being able to keep the group that you're working with also working toward those deadlines and goals and meeting those tasks. I would say time management, which would come into that, because you'll find the more you get involved, the less time you have to get things done. So if I'm going to have a meeting, I want to make sure that I'm respecting everybody else's time, that if they accept that meeting, they're probably accepting it because I have an agenda on there, they know why they're attending, mm -hmm. and they know what the goal is before they even come to that meeting. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, in, in my setting, I'm usually double, triple booked on meetings. If I don't have that, I'm not accepting the meeting because I've got many <laughs> other things that need to be done. Yeah. So, another part of communication. Okay, lots of nice uh, little nuggets of tips. <laughs> That's really good there. Um, okay, so something I didn't hear, and this is kind of a follow-up question to that, is programming. I didn't hear anyone mention programming or truly any type of technical, hard technical skills. What do you feel about that? Because that's a very, very common question from students. What programming like code language? and things yeah. like that. Yeah. So what are your thoughts on that? Needed? Not needed? I dabble in a little, but I, I've never really felt that it's been a need for the job. Um, I think more importantly would be if, if you come across, because you'll come across systems and technology that you're not aware of not being scared of it, be, being able to ask, give me a general understanding. Right. And, and, and at least enough so that I can work with whatever that tool is and help others know how to use it to what I need. But not, I don't think coding has been something that's yeah, really been. As far as someone telling me what they used in SQL to make this work, that I don't <laughs> need to know that. I just need to know, can it work or will it not work? Unless um, it's broken and then you say, right, I'll find somebody right, that can fix it if right, I can't. So, right. yeah. The next question is, you know, all these skill sets, would you recommend any type of formal manifestation of those skill sets? So for example, you can get certified in Microsoft, you know, things like PowerPoint, Excel, you can get certified in various things, maybe even in informatics. What types of certifications, if any, would you recommend? I think it depends on your organization, for one. The, I don't know that certifying in Microsoft um, applications is really necessary if your organization offers a course where you can take that and learn efficiencies in it I think that's great that would be very helpful but you can also be ANCC certified um, for which is a nursing certification and they have an informatics um, arm of that so that's a good certification to get if your EHR has any kind of certifications your vendor and I should probably add to that do you feel certifications are needed by any chance? Recommended? Required? Like how strongly should someone pursue? I think it depends on your organization still. I mean for all of mm -hmm. us and the roles we're in, um, there's requirements. Um, kind of to get beyond the entry level you need to get your um, ANCC board certification. Um, so we do it because it's required for the job we want but um, I yeah. don't know if I would otherwise recommend it. Mm -hmm. I'd agree. I think in the EHR level, depending on the EHR that your organization uses, 
Um, sometimes there's different levels of like proficiency versus certification and based on what your organization requires mm -hmm. but if you know you're using that extensively I would gauge that and if it was if it was open to you and also what the cost is <laughs> um, uh, if it's available then it would be a valuable tool but like even when we were talking about uh, like word certification any program that school-wise that you're doing should at least be exposing you to some of that but if you're mm -hmm. not feeling very savvy with that you can easily take a class either through your organization or through school while you're doing it and say, you know what, I want to brush up on that, that skill set. Mm -hmm. So as, what, is it, what, is it, what is required and then what is it going to do for you? One last high level tip that you can offer to someone that's looking to get into informatics. Like what might one thing or two things be um, that you can think of that you would recommend? I would, say, I would say, like we all three did, just reach out to the, any resources mm -hmm. you can find. I think nursing informatics and is certainly kind of coming into the limelight a little bit more than it ever has, and maybe it's not as hard to, to discover now and people know more about it. Um, but I would say just reach out to any resources you have at your organization and uh, interview those people and see if it's the right fit for you. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think that's it. good, yeah, I agree. Asking people who are doing it is gonna be a great resource for you so that you can understand if that's really the path you want to travel. And any master's level nursing that you're going to do is going to require research. So if you're watching this video, you're probably already researching. <laughs> so continue to do that. Mm -hmm. um, that's why we're doing this now to make people aware online to be able to find that information. So keep digging. There's there's going to be more out there. So okay. Well, that's going to be a wrap on the video. <laughs> Thank you guys for your time. Yeah. And uh, maybe we'll see you guys again in the future. Thanks. Okay. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in and watching the video. If you like the content, definitely hit the Impro RX button over to your left to subscribe and definitely check out more videos over here uh, to your right. Now, as always, if you have questions, comments, and even better, suggestions for future videos, Definitely let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, until next time guys.